Item of business is a tabled item from the February 28, 2018 meeting. Petition of Presbyterian Homes and Family Services to rezone approximately 47 and 836,000 acres located on portions of 4301 Williams Road and 150 Linden Avenue, also known as tax parcels 185-07-001, 068-01-005, and 068-01-800. From R1 Low Density Residential District to IN 1C Institutional District Conditional. The submitted concept plan and narrative indicates the planned construction of two non-lighted turf athletic fields, an American with Disabilities Act access, uh, accessible pool, two parking areas, associated grading, retaining walls, and fencing. I appreciate everyone taking time to explore this more and come back to revisit the topic. Uh, Mr. Martin. Members of Planning Commission, this is a item that was considered by the Planning Commission on February 28th, and the Commission chose to uh, postpone it until today in order to give the petitioner the ability to consider additional proffers to address concerns that were <clears throat> brought up during the, the public hearing. Uh, just a brief overview again. Uh, the petition does propose to rezone approximately 48 acres of the 163 acres owned and maintained by the Presbyterian Homes and Family Services. Uh, that 48 acres is this area that is uh, shown in yellow here and the remainder of the property uh, that would not be changed is uh, surrounding it and outlined by the white line. <clears throat> the property is currently zoned uh, R1, low density residential. Uh, however, it is recommended for institutional uses on the city's future land use map. And again, it's been recommended for institutional uses uh, back until at least 1984, as you can see this area here. Presbyterian Homes was recommended for uh, institutional uses. Uh, institutional uses uh, include the city's institutions, such as religious, educational, and other nonprofit entities. Examples of these include uh, churches, cemeteries, private schools, and universities, private nonprofit hospital, uh, service clubs and organizations, and other nonprofit institutions, uh, such as Presbyterian Homes. Uh, as required by the city's zoning ordinance, the uh, petitioner had a traffic an analysis conducted. Uh, we do have with us today Mr. Don DeBerry, the city's transportation engineer, in case you have questions concerning that. Uh, the, the resulting analysis in included intersections at VES Road and Linden Avenue, VES Road and Rivermont Avenue. And the analysis included the traffic volumes that would generate be generated by the uses proposed uh, by this petition, as well as those that were proposed by Westminster Canterbury when they rezoned to IN1 and also included a 1% annual growth rate. Uh, the result of that analysis indicated that um, the intersections would continue to function at a level service A or B, uh, with the exception being the southbound movement at Rivermont and VES that would uh, continue to function at a level of service E. And if you remember, the study indicated that uh, that movement would take at least 175 p.m. trips additional before that intersection would degrade. <clears throat> the campus uh, was established in 1903. And again, the petitioner has met or exceeded the standards contained uh, within the zoning ordinance. Uh, the Petitioner has submitted 10 additional proffers uh, since uh, the public hearing that was conducted two weeks ago. Uh, the first two were the original proffers, and uh, would you like me to go through these, or how would you like to handle that? Has everyone had a chance to review them? I think, I think okay. we're, we're fine with that. Thanks, though. So th these proffers were submitted in an attempt to address the concerns heard by the petitioner at the last public hearing. Uh, they have been voluntarily submitted. They're acceptable to the planning division and uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions. Again, uh, the public hearing was closed. The commission uh, can deliberate among themselves or they can choose to talk to members of the audience uh, at your discretion. Great, thank you. 
Um, my thinking was to allow the petitioner to come forward and add anything to the original, and then to invite a specific response or two, just so we get input from everyone. Is that okay? All right, so someone representing the petition would like to come forward and, and, and yeah, we will be enforcing the usual time limits of um, 10 minutes for the petitioner and then either 10 or three for additional responses. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Perrault. Um, I'm really here to answer questions. Um, obviously, a lot has happened since the last hearing on February 28th. We uh, took the request of this commission seriously. It was our impression that the message was, go back, hear, listen to what you heard at the hearing, and mit mitigate against all the concerns the neighbors made at the hearing. And as you remember, what we mostly heard at the last hearing was that our proffers at that hearing were not full and complete to address uh, statements we made at community meetings. So we went back and we voluntarily, without anybody asking us to, without negotiating these things, without asking for any quid pro quo from any of the neighbors, particularly Westminster Canterbury, we voluntarily proffered these 10 additional proffers which are intended and I think do remove any uncertainty as to hypothetical future activities that we may have otherwise been allowed to perform in the I-1 zone uh, area as a matter of right. We even, we even went ahead, even though we have no plans to do it, we proffered we'll never put another synthetic turf field in there other than um, what is on our concept plan. And again, I, I know you all don't need me to repeat all the proffers, but you know, for members of the audience who, who may not be aware, we proffered away additional fields, we proffered away illuminated electrical scoreboard, we proffered away bleachers or stands, we proffered away any public address or amplified sound system, we proffered away any freestanding gymnasium building, we proffered away any indoor pool facility, we agreed affirmatively to install and maintain sports netting around the fields designed to prevent balls from flying off the property. We plan to do that anyway, so we're happy to proffer these things. We proffered to put an additional traffic dampening device on the roadway on our property as close as possible to the uh, Woods Edge parking lot. We voluntarily agreed to place and maintain signs along the private drive on our property to tell people to obey speed limits and to watch for turning vehicles. And we agreed to direct all visitors to the property by any outward communication or website that we would direct them to our property from the VES road entrance. So that's one thing we did. The next thing we did is we went back and confirmed in response to some comments by Commissioner Lowe at the last meeting that we have never dedicated this private drive. In, and remember, it's a private drive from the entrance at Linden Road all the way to the property line at Westminster Canterbury. Uh, it's a private road. And we've never dedicated that road over to the state of Virginia or the city of Lynchburg. And they've never accepted that road as a public road. And therefore, it's not a public road, regardless of whether members of the public drive on it from time to time. And there's, there's Virginia case law on that point, um, if, if you all need further clarification on that. The third thing we did is we went back and uh, members in, of the staff of Presbyterian Homes researched our files, our historical files, back to the early 1990s. When this easement was negotiated in 1991 and 1992, and we found various letters in there that I think you all have seen. We wrote a letter, the board of directors of my client wrote a letter to the chairman of the board of directors of Westminster Canterbury and attempted to further explore the basis of their statements disputing the easement, primarily as to what the nature of the use of the easement was, whether it was for a charitable purpose or whether it was for an orphanage. All of our information that we found indicated all the evidence and all the statements and all the letters indicated it was clearly negotiated to be for the purposes 
of any charitable purpose of the organization. We asked Westminster Canterbury to provide any information to the contrary by document or statement or otherwise so we could better understand their position on this and they did not provide any. There was a meeting, however, uh, this, past m this past Monday uh, during, the, during the snowstorm. Uh, lawyers were not involved. The chairman of the boards of the two parties, Westminster Canterbury and, and uh, Presbyterian Homes and the two CEOs met. I was not there. Mr. Keller was not there. Uh, my understanding is it was a productive discussion on the easement and on the proffers. I, I believe, again, I was not there. I would like the parties who were there to, to comment on what the agreement was. But my understanding was an agreement as to the easement was reached, uh, removing any present dispute as to what's before this planning commission with regard to the I and one application and the concept plan. In addition, it's my understanding uh, we requested Westminster Canterbury if they had any additional demands for proffers or suggestions for proffers other than the ones we voluntarily made and they said they did not have any additional ones. So I will let them, instead of me characterizing the specific nature of the agreement, I'll let them speak to that. Mr. Dendy can also speak to that as, as the fact he was there. It is my sincere belief that we've done everything that's been expected of us to do since the last commissioner's hearing to make additional proffers, to mitigate against any possible negative adverse impacts, um, and to remove this easement issue as a present dispute before this commission. As therefore, I once again would say uh, we've We've filed this application. We meet the criteria of IN1. And um, we feel confident that we've gone above and beyond what's been required of someone in our position to apply for IN1 zoning. We meet all the criteria. Uh, there are no negative adverse impacts at this time. And we, would, uh, we continue to appreciate your attention to this matter. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. We may, we'll probably have some in a few minutes. Again, we're not, we're not reopening the public hearing, but in fairness, um, there seem to be two general groups in opposition, one represented by Westminster Canterbury and one sort of the, the Peakland neighborhood group. So if there's someone from Westminster Canterbury who would care to comment on what's happened in the past two weeks and where we are now, we would invite you to come forward. Good afternoon. Uh, we did have a very productive meeting on Monday and are very appreciative of the proffers that uh, humankind has given for this project. Um, they are everything that we were hoping for. Um, we are still at a point where we feel like we need to object to the application for the reason that the easement is still a hang up. Um, we are not blocking this project based on, we are not, how do I say this? We are saying it's okay for this project to go ahead with using our easement with what is defined in this scope, two fields, pool, uh, the parking spaces. Uh, where we have a problem is we still um, feel like the easement is uh, something that's important to us. We've talked prior meetings about the safety and everything, and I think there's parameters in place for this to be a, uh, a safe zone or can be made safer and that we can take care of that issue. Our concern is, is if this is expanded in the future, um, we want to reserve the right to oppose that easement and um, just don't feel like we can completely say yes to this. So somewhat awkward, uh, we are saying for this project, they can use the easement but um, we're still trying to work out details. We, um, it's been very last minute and I'll take fault for that. We're still uh, now in a third document of trying to get some agreement on the easement to say, we're okay for you to do this and we understand public right of ways and charitable purposes, but that we just don't wanna have X amount of cars exponentially increased coming through that area in the future. For the record, can we get your name yes. and title? Yes, Sean Hewitt, CEO of Westminster Canterbury. Thank you. And I, I 
I think Mr. Francisco said his name at the beginning, but just in case it was John Francisco representing the petitioner. Thank you. Herschel Keller, I'm a lawyer speaking on behalf of Westminster Canterbury. Just speaking briefly to the, briefly to the easement in response to the letter that um, was filed at the commission that was sent from Michael Elliott to uh, the board chair at Westminster Canterbury, Bill Gale. Um, there's, um, there's a whole sea of law with respect to easements. And so, for example, if Mr. Hewitt and I are neighbors, we have neighboring farms, and Sean comes to me and he says, listen, your farm is right next to mine. My access to the main road is down a little windy road. It's very hard for me to get to the grocery store and school. I'd like to have an easement across your property. And I said, well, you're my neighbor and we're friends. I'm happy to grant you that easement. And so I grant him an easement across his property that's restricted to the purpose of a farm. And then several years later, he, uh, he builds a 50,000 uh, head um, Angus feeding operation. He, he builds a very large uh, commercial milk production facility even though the easement is still restricted to the purposes of a farm, and he could argue that those are the uses, it's, it's what's considered under the law an overburdening of the easement, the property remedy of which is an, is a, is an extinguishment. And so we, we recognize the back and forth, but the fact of the matter is it still is an outstanding issue between Westminster Canterbury and the Presbyterian Homes as to who has what rights in and to the easement. And we continue to believe that under the law um, that we have the right to terminate that easement if the project goes forward without an agreement. And um, you know, there's a saying in my business, in our business, that, that uh, when the law's on your side, argue the law. When the facts are on your side, you argue the facts. When all else fails, you know, jump up and down and pound on the table. And so you, know, you have me arguing the law and, and the other side arguing, uh, arguing the facts of this. Um, we, we have been negotiating a written, there, there was a verbal accord reached as, with respect to the easement, which was that Westminster Canterbury would allow any existing uses that were um, um, uh, currently occurring at, at the Presby on the Presbyterian Homes property, and we would also grant them the right to any uh, any uses that are contemplated in the concept plan that's filed as part of the IN1 application, but that if they expanded beyond that, we would have the right to go back. Um, it, would, it, would revert, it would revert us back to our current position, which is there's a dispute, and that, that Westminster Canterbury's failure to enforce its rights with respect to the easement now could not be used against it uh, in the future. And, and we're, I mean, we've, we've done several turns of the document and we, don't, we just don't have an agreement yet. And it's, it's really for that reason that we're opposing, continue to oppose the application. Although we're very grateful for the proffers that were made. So Great. Thank, thank you. you. And is Mr. Kerr present this evening? Okay. Well, we have, we have a letter from him that I think covers the concerns of the neighborhood very well, and I think that's something we can discuss. Um, I, have, I have highlighted his specific points that he made, and I think we'll bring those up. But we may have questions for you as we go through it. Um, Mr. Day, okay. Would you like to come forward and, and speak on behalf of the neighbors? And, and speak your full name, please. And uh, thank you. My name is Bob Day. I live on Peakland. And I think from the neighbor's perspective, certainly the concept that is presented is very attractive, certainly with all the properties. Soccer fields are a great idea, and we hope that it's done. What we are very uncomfortable with is the IN1 zoning designation in order to get there. That's what we're uncomfortable with not the concept that they presented. And IN1 zoning grants the applicant to do many things by right. Five years from now, 10 years from now, if they decide to sell the land and there's another owner there, they will have an IN1 zoning. And may, we may all of a sudden look and and see a 24-7 industrial park in there or a four-story daycare center that competes with Westminster. There's a number of things that the owner can do by right. Humankind has no intention of going down that road, but the next owner might do that. We would like to be involved in the future evolution of that land in discussions with you and with city council. With a conditional use permit, we can do that. If you grant IN1 zoning, we can't. We can't talk to you, 
we can't talk to our city council members. We don't think very much of the IN1 zoning designation. In fact, we'd all be much happier if it was dropped from the code. But it's there, and they've applied for it. And what I would like to have come out of this, for you to tell them it's a great idea, come back as a conditional use permit, and it will sell right through. That's it. Great. Thank you. All right. We can start deliberating or asking follow-up questions. I would like to ask a question of uh, the uh, two parties. Y'all had a meeting, you said, on Monday through the snow. I applaud you for plugging through the snowstorm to do that. Question is, on the easement, I believe it was on page three, as a subparagraph, bow leg two, said easement and right of way shall not be used as a public way or thoroughfare and shall not be dedicated to any public use. My question is, does that statement still remain in the easement? Yes. Thank you. I guess one thing we can do is go through some of the concerns and just see how we feel about them, starting with, um, in, in, um, in my book, there were the proffers, there were uh, concerns about the easement. Two weeks ago, there were some discussions about finances and then the concept of institutional zoning versus a CUP. So let's start with the proffers. Do we feel like we've made some progress? I think we did. Yeah. Oh. The, a question was raised by a member of the public, um, and, I, and I realize you could just keep adding more and more specific proffers and make the list endlessly long, but he asked about parking uh, lights for the parking lots, even though they're, they're not being allowed on the fields. He was concerned that they still might be allowed on parking lots. He mentioned um, evergreen buffers over by the neighborhood areas as well as by Westminster Canterbury. And he was also concerned about portable sound systems, even though it has been proffered that no sound systems would be constructed. So there were, there were three specific concerns he raised with regards to proffers. Um, and I'm not saying we need to address those or request or discuss the need for them to be added, but they were brought up and I just wanted to make folks aware of them, unless you all, again, have those are large enough concerns for you. The one about the, the headlights, well, no, you didn't mention headlights. You mentioned the parking lot lights. Um, I don't understand why there would be a lot of headlights if there are no night practices or night games. I don't think they're going to be playing in the dark. So um, without field lights, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if they're going to have parking lot uh, lights I, unless they're planning to use those parking lots for other right. programs, um, not on the fields. Uh, so I wouldn't think there'd be a lot of headlights. If there are, they're going to be at 9 o'clock um, fairly early. I did wonder about the evergreen buffer, and I can't tell whether it's, you know, is it necessary there um, to buffer, I guess, that closest parking lot from Linden Avenue. That's the one that might need it. Looks like there are some trees there already. It's one that looks thicker than it's between them and this one. Sure. You know, and this person from the other area. Yeah. <clears throat> but. Yeah, I mean, th those those were not major issues for me. Um, and, I, and I think the buffer is one that could even be addressed with more evergreens down the road with. Mm -hmm. um, Well, again, that's something that I th they're not major issues for me. I, I, th I think a lot has been conceded with the difference in buffers from before and what's been offered now. So for me, I'm okay with the buffer situation. Any more discussion on that? Have you and I addressed whether they're going to put the parking lot? Um, only someone wants to ask them that. No, I mean someone from the commission. <laughs> well, there seems to be two parking lots on the diagram. 
homes. We can, we can assume that, can't we? There would definitely be parking lots. Yeah. The question was whether or not there would be lights. Oh. And there, that, I don't know whether it's legally required you have to put lights with parking lots that size. I don't know. I, can, I can't imagine wanting to spend money to light parking lots that aren't going to be used at right. night. That's a significant cost. Right. Yeah. Smart. Right. Yeah. Well, the second major issue of discussion was the easement. And I, I honestly just don't know where I stand on that. Um, it's, it depends on who you heard, who you heard last, um, and I don't. I, I feel a lot better about the easement in that Westminster Canterbury says that they reserve the right to restrict any future use beyond what's uh, what's proposed and so uh, that eases my mind to all the criticism I've heard from a lot of people saying you know we don't mind these fields but what else are they going to do next and we know they had bigger plans so uh, what I know is if they have bigger plans they do have to come back to the Planning Commission they can't do anything beyond much beyond this other than you know I don't know put a couple of goats out there or something like that but if they're going to add more traffic, they're going to, it sounds like they're going to have to answer to Westminster Canterbury at that point. Um, so that makes me a little more at ease about this. I would assume that that restricts for profit use as well because it's for the charitable use of the property versus a for profit apartments or condos or industry. That isn't charitable. So yeah. that's in, in the in the you know written in the easement. I, I guess for me, if the city is comfortable with the current standing of the easement, then that's what I rely on for my judgment. Um, well, I wrote down the one that opened this can of worms at the last meeting. Um, my problem is. And the word is, and they just confirmed, Westminster Canterbury confirmed that the wording remains in the easement. And I'll go ahead and say again slowly, said easement and right of way shall not be used as a public way or thoroughfare and shall not be dedicated to any public use. That being said, we can't have traffic coming off of VES Road on that trail, on that easement to access the field because that violates or is in conflict with the wording in the easement. I don't think so. The easement, though, is that public would be, I decide I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut across there to get to Linden, or yeah. I'm going to drive in there with my kids to camp out outside of a... Uh, but it, outs says, it, it says any public use. But think about that for a minute, Mark. That means that if, if I can't, if I'm a member of the public and not an employee of, of humankind, I can't come and watch my kid run cross country. And I think with the way that, I mean, we got plenty of legal help in here, so I'm sure they can, they can, they can eliminate well, this, but my understanding is that wasn't a, <laughs> sorry, to that wasn't an invitation. <laughs> but, but my thought process is, if it is, if, if it is for an event that is sponsored by humankind, you are by definition coming on as a guest of humankind and therefore I, I realize this isn't legal taken out of the public. Now, if that's incorrect, feel, right. feel free to shoot me. Uh, can, I, can I respond? Or Please. I won't. I'll defer. Oh, wait a minute. I, sorry. No. It's, no but yeah, let's, well, if we can clarify this point. I, I, see, the, I see the cannons rolling up, so let's go ahead and get this one off the table. I, I we've got three attorneys that are going to stand up. Where they have stood up, I predict we're going to get four different answers from three attorneys. <laughs> I, I, I agree. I will say. As a lawyer for the petitioner, if, I would just like an opportunity if, to if you come, this issue. Uh, if you want to come forward, and let's, let's keep these comments brief, because I feel like we're going to revisit the me, same topic. 60 seconds. Let me say one thing before we get started on this. It is in my mind that this is a point of law. That, that in its extreme extent will not affect, should not affect zoning in and, of it, in and of itself. This is something that regardless of what we decide today, you guys will go to the Alamo on for as long as it takes to get both sides to settle the dispute. But, it, but in my mind, this is, this is completely separate from the zoning. Is that? Is that, is that from a legal standpoint? Is that where everybody else is? No. Okay. 
my, one of my concerns is if someone decides later on they cannot use that access road, the only out route into humankind will be from Peekler Place down Linden Avenue. And that is something we do not have a traffic study on. That's true, except for the fact that the issue yes. here on the table is who owns that easement. Well, as long as this word Might. stands right there, I feel that um, we have to be concerned about the people on Linden Avenue. I'd also ask if, you know, and back to what you were saying, is an easement required for zoning? You know, I, I mean, is it written in, in our zoning law that you have to have that easement? Can we rezone land and not have an easement necessarily? Well, the issue is going to be the ownership of that easement, because I, I will agree. I agree with you completely, Tom. I haven't backed off of that, except for the fact that it will drive the traffic down Linden. And, you know. But private traffic, not public. Right, right. Private guests. People coming, yeah, mm -hmm. people coming down right. there. If you drive everything to that, that's going to be an issue. But if the easement's taken away, wouldn't everything come back to yeah. us at that point? Anyway, you know, because the whole concept will change. Certainly, if it was rezoned, if the outer, which some people are worried about, the outer perimeter being rezoned, that would certainly come our way. But I'm just and saying, that if, would we, be, if, we, <laughs> if, if it passed with IN1 today, and then Westminster two years from now decided to fight it and took and won and took the easement away, it, it would have to come back here because that would be a, a concept change, correct, Tom? It, it, because all traffic would be coming through Linden, so that would be a complete concept change and it would have to come back and... Uh, I think you got a couple of things going on. Uh, one, I think it's very important for the commission to remember that Westminster just conceded that they're not going to dispute the use of the easement for what's before you as part of the concept plan, okay? That's pretty much what you said, Herschel. That's, well, if that's not what you said, you should come clarify because that's what both you and the uh, president said. Well, this, worth, that's not what I understood either, Tom. Okay. Regardless, that's what I heard. But in any event, it's important what the commission heard. So. You've got the easement that comes across. Uh, if at some point they lose that easement and they have to run traffic through the other side of London, then uh, there would have to be additional traffic studies. And if they can't maintain the level of service, then they wouldn't be able to do anything or they'd have to improve the streets. Um, I, I, I think that the <laughs> Presbyterian homes, humankind, whatever has proffered out all sorts of things. Um, so, you know, I'm really at a loss. You know, we created these institutional districts, spent two years worth of work on them exactly for this because we did not want our institutions to have to come back and get uh, conditional use permits after conditional use permit. And there's also a little thing called equal protection that humankind, Presbyterian home, should be able to enjoy the use of their property exactly the way their neighbors does. And, uh, you know, all of this stuff about whether we should be considering their endowments and their financial stuff is just, we should not be doing that. It's, it's, it's purely based on the impacts and they have submitted everything that the ordinance requires and have addressed it, they exceed it. Uh, so, I, I, I think the take home message from this is if the easement is lost and traffic is affected, then something will be done. Right. So and so to me that removes the easement and concerns. I might say it, it appears that if, if they lost the easement and they had these fields and they needed to get to them, they could probably get there from Williams Road, which would, it's another traffic uh, issue. but. You know, it's right, right up there, and they abut it, so they could get there. So, can we move on to move on from easement? Can I say something? No, and uh, not right now. Thank you. Um, so, the next topic we may call you back up in a moment. Can we speak on the easement? Uh, uh, 
I would object to that. If I can't speak on easement, I would object to Mr. Santana's. I, I, I am not interested in calling anyone forward on easement discussions, but I'm not going to stop another member from doing it. I think we've covered it. I think we beat it to death. Yep. So, in fairness, we won't let anyone talk. The next topic was the finances, and I was actually pretty concerned about this at the last meeting. Um, one of the arguments kind of was that Westminster Canterbury has earned the right for this zoning, but humankind does not based upon some financial discussions. And we've never considered finances in my four years on planning commission, and I consider that a very dangerous road to go down. Um, I think that opens up a lot of avenues we don't want to approach. So to me, the finances were never an issue. And I didn't, I, I honestly didn't appreciate even having the discussion on that. But I know there were some concerns about finances expressed by other members of the commission, and I respect that. Thoughts? On finances? Yeah. No. Okay. I, I, I agree with you. Uh, I agree with you. I, I don't think that's our, our Not our business. Yep. I know we've had, and not to beat, beat a dead horse, but we've had things being ring zoned, and then the company has gone belly up, and that lot is that vacant. And anything that's decided does carry over to new owners, which brings us to the last. Well, I, oh, know, go ahead. I, 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 I'm not going to repeat all the comments and uncertainties that I've that I made at the last meeting, and I think technically we are correct that we should not consider finances. Um, it, and I, I hope that humankind has a wonderful, successful endowment that continues. And, and as I said, this is not about the great work that humankind does right now. And I, I hope they continue because they've been a great asset to the community. But um, I think it, it's a situation very similar to what went on with Oakwood Country Club, in my mind. Whoever thought Oakwood Country Club would, would find themselves in bankruptcy and that land was sort of up for grabs. It, the story turned out okay at the end of the day, uh, but, uh, and I know we can, can uh, make predictions that never come true or base our opinions on things that never come true. It is certainly not the deciding issue in my mind, but you know, we are here to exercise our discretion. Um, and you know, uh, if not, we wouldn't exist. Um, and there is still an issue in the back of my mind uh, about the financial implications of what could poss possibly happen with that large tract of land. Uh, as I said, I, it's sort of like the situation with Oakwood Country Club. Nobody ever thought that would happen with Oakwood. And the story turned out just fine at the end of the day. But for, a, for an extended time period, it was quite a, a, a tumultuous situation in the, in the community. So it's certainly not my only consideration as to what my vote is going to be today, but it is a consideration that, it, that it is in, in the back of my mind. Okay, thanks. And then the last item for consideration on my list was um, Institutional One versus the CUP, which goes back to obviously the big question here. And we've heard arguments for both. Thoughts on that? When, when I read letters and comments, I think that if people are really concerned about what goes on with this piece of land as IN1, but then they're not under the conditional use permit, I feel like it's the same thing, especially with all the proffers. So I think that the conditional use, what, what is in the proffers will relate back to what they do under a conditional use permit. I think it falls under what the city has, um, has kind of ordained in its zoning for this property to be. There's no question that this, you know, discussions on this issue have been, have been contentious, but also involved. And I have spent, I'm looking at it again now to make sure I haven't, haven't missed anything. To Tom's point, the IN1 is a pretty, is a, is a pretty restrictive um, zoning, particularly given the fact that everything on there, with the exception of the one item that can't be, is not permitted by right, which is a telecommunications center, is something that, that Westminster, or excuse me, that humankind's already doing. So there's not really any additional 
you know, use that would be allowed. I mean, to, I'm just thinking about your comment, Mr. Day, about the, about the high rise. That's not, that's not going to be, even if somebody else bought it, that would still be something that would run afoul of that IN1. Um, so I, I feel like between the, between the traffic and the IN1, you know, I'm, 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 I'm pretty much okay with that particular piece based on the definitions as they currently stand. Now, if that changes, obviously, that's a, that's, that's a difference if somebody comes back and rezones this in five years. We can't make decisions based on that. We've got to make decisions on what we know now. Um, and, and at the end of the day, after pouring over this, that's where I land. That's where I land. I don't, it's hard for me to separate why this is a IN1 request. I mean, this is, I mean, to me, this is a simple CUP request for what's there, and you've given away a lot of the stuff that, you know, you would normally consider to be an option for really advancing the IN1. But I can see nothing on here that, that's going to create um, gastric distress, distress in my mind over what's going to happen down the road with the IN1. Um, from a you know from a zoning situation, the situation that we've gotten into, or the, the, the our role, as I understand it, is to is to see where zoning fits. And um, the fact of the matter is, this is exactly the type of situation that was that's, that's included in that definition. And I don't have a good reason to come back to you, Tom, and say that recommendation that planning is is made is incorrect based on what's currently in the code. I, I agree, and I would I would argue that our our charge is to even more specifically find out where zoning doesn't fit. And as I said in the last meeting, I come into these looking for reasons to disagree with the petition uh, when it is favoring what the the future land use map has laid out. And you might be against IN one as a zoning classification. That's an argument for another day. But as long as it exists this matches up with that description and including the fact that we have IN1 right next to it. So it's hard, it's hard for me to, to come up with a reason against it. And I'm good at doing that. I, I, I too am in, am in support of the concept of IN1 for this, but I'm not in support of this petition. I think the, I'm not in support of this petition due to the easement issue until that's fully resolved, but I am in full support of the zoning. I think it's correct zoning, but I think we have some issues that need to be addressed. And, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna uh, reopen a discussion that we've had in the past about institutional zoning. I'm just not a big fan of the institutional zoning concept in general. And that is one of the factors that will influence how I vote against it the uh, petition today. Um, what you said about a high-rise apartment or a high-rise building or whatever, you were, you were talking about that would not happen because of traffic concern? I mean, if, if anything... Well, it's not, it's not permitted within the definition. It's not permitted, yeah. okay. Yeah. But anything that they but did... But anything traffic-wise... That, wise that would increase yeah. the traffic more than they anticipate now would have to come back before yes. this correct that is correct we've seen that happen with liberty a few times mm -hmm. even though they have i am two right yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. other thoughts comments well you didn't really talk about traffic as being one of your concerns but I, I guess, I mean, that is one of my big concerns mm -hmm. because I think that's one of the concerns of most of the neighbors. Um, and I'm very concerned about the traffic on Linden. I'm also very concerned about the traffic on VES Road. And um, while we have a traffic level E at the intersection of VES and Rivermont or Boonesboro, or whatever it is there, um, that's pretty bad. E is you know, just one, one letter above F. And um, however, we've, we've hit this wall before. We, 
we're not supposed to penalize the last guy into the room because, you know, the traffic has gotten too bad already. Um, now, if, if he were, in, and apparently, according to the traffic studies, this proposal is not going to make it a level F, so it's still going to be an E. It's certainly not going to be better than it was. But. You know, Nancy, I, I can't remember how you voted on the, the townhouse project out on Timberlake Road, but, you know, we had very much the same discussion about the, the traffic and the traffic study and the safety issues, and if I'm not mistaken, the vote against that by the Planning Commission was five to two, and then that was subsequently upheld on a four to three vote by City Council on Monday, I think. So, while I'm concerned about the traffic, uh, I, I can't, I can't vote against it with the traffic study the way they are. I mean, I find it hard to believe that the traffic study is what it is, and it doesn't tip, but it doesn't. So. Well, I, I think the traffic as it stands is bad, and I think even you know it. I, I've received calls and we've gotten emails you know, in, regard to, in regards to the traffic and I think that that's a, a Lynchburg City infrastructure issue and you know I I don't I mean I don't want to I, I don't think it's fair to penalize a, a landowner for a problem that the city has although we did that two two meetings ago when we voted down Timberlake Road so, um, yeah, I'm a little conflicted. I had concerns about traffic and the fit of that petition mm -hmm. as well. Um, Just a point, you also had no traffic study with that petition mm -hmm. saying anything different. Well, I think the thing with this one, Dicey, though, is, you know, one of the things that the traffic study did tell you is that you are at serious levels isn't the right word i suppose but you'd be concerned with the exception of the one there you know at, at ves and, and um in boonesboro which is to your point horrible it's always been horrible um that's a difficult one for me because of the comment you made last time tom is if anybody did anything that was going to create it all you know because it's going to increase that a lot then they'd have to address that particular in intersection to address that particular traffic problem but you have to weigh that against the fact that we're talking about incremental traffic here. We're not talking about, and this is why I have a hard time with the traffic studies at large. Linden's a, a tight road. Linden's going to be tough. I went down in a reasonably sized SUV, not a suburban, and you know, if a kid had been playing stickball, he'd have gone, he'd have gone to the curb. There's no question about it. It's tight through there, particularly with cars. Um, but we're talking about you know, some sports situations and, and, and really doing, um, you know, lighter use it's a, in the sense that it's going to be at the end of the day or it's going to be on the weekends. My point in saying that is to say, I don't know that we're dealing with something like a, a apartment complex like we were before where you've got this many people are going to have to live there. This many people are going to have to have this many cars. This many people are going to at least have to go to work and come back. Does that, I mean, to me, there's more, there's more meat to it from the standpoint of trying to figure out if I try and do the same thing with this, which may, admittedly might not be the right methodology, but I, don't, I just can't generate a lot of incremental traffic. If, if, if it was something other than, say, cross country and, and, and soccer, I mean, I've, I've followed my kids for a lot of years. I've just never seen those kind of crowds. Even when you go to, like, mega places like you see at the beach or in, in Richmond, I mean, a couple of grandparents and a couple of parents and maybe a board brother and sister and that's about, about the best you can turn together for you know for an audience so my point in saying this is not to dismiss the traffic study because i think that's key particularly in this area but i just don't see it in this particular application i've tried to consider it carefully and after careful consideration i just don't see it an issue in this area other thoughts or comments Well, before we move on to a, a motion, I just have a, a couple of things. First, a reminder that we are only making a recommendation. So City Council will be making the official decision. So I would encourage you to follow up at their meeting. Uh, also, I've 
I've definitely noticed that uh, to me it appears there's been more dialogue among the interested parties in the past few weeks face to face than there has been in a long time and that's a good thing for neighbors to have and I would definitely encourage that to continue it, that that can only improve the situation whatever the outcome with that do we have a motion I move that we approve um, per the motion is written in the proper as were submitted to Tom Martin. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Opposed. So five, five to two? Five to two. So the, the petition is being recommended for approval. Uh, we do not have any other items on our agenda for this evening. Tom, do you have anything to add? All right. They weren't officially done. So thank you all very much for attending. We appreciate your interest in this topic. Have a great evening. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor.